welcome back. Go back to the channel. Uh, if you're your first time, be sure to check out my other videos. And if you like, be sure to subscribe. So right now I'm going to install a dash camera on a BMW X5. And the reason why I'm deciding to do the dash camera is I find myself in a lot of situations. And I'm not sure if it's based on driving. I mean, I, I feel like it is more the car than my driving because when I drive my Civic, these kind of things will happen. But I get a lot of people with that this They want to brake check me. They want to cut me off really closely. They want to drive aggressive around me to the point where it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And like I said, I only notice it when the X5. Don't notice so much with the M3. Um, and I'm not sure because the X5 is all black and black wheels, black grills. It's just, you know, maybe it just seems to intimidate people a little bit. So I just want to get a dash camera to protect myself. And, you know, in case there's any situation where there could be a dispute and there's, you know, I'm in, you know, unfortunately involved in the accident, I just want to have that extra protection because you never know if things could be he says, she said technique. I already have a dash camera in the Civic, which it's okay. I have a black view. I believe it's the 590, and unfortunately, I didn't get the Wi-Fi version. And the downfall is that if I need to upload a video, I have to take the chip out, plug it into my computer, upload the video, and it's not a really a process. So right now, I have my ordered awesome Black Friday deal. Uh, I got Thinkware FA 200 dash camera, and it's a front and rear system. So it'll be really helpful. So let's get started. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things today. I am prepping my M3 for the track. So there's a lot of things out right now. You know, just trying to get things ready to go for track day tomorrow. But I really want to get this dash camera installed. So things you'll need. You obviously need the dash camera. Auto trim removal kit. This is helpful for removing the trim in the interior of the car to run the wires behind. So these things are plastic, they're soft, they won't damage, and it's really helpful. I have, you know, those uh, pliers, which you'll see why later. I uh, have fuse, extra fuses, have a fuse tap kit, or what do you call it, add a fuse. So basically, I'm going to find a fuse, because I'm going to hardwire this camera. There's two ways you run the camera. You can either plug it into your cigarette lighter, which is not really the best option, because then you lose that space and you have a wire hanging out from your dash. So I like to just run a heart wire to the, the fuse. Like in the Civic, I have a wire just connected underneath the fuse box. You don't see any wires. All you see is the dash camera is really clean installed. So I'm gonna find a couple of fuses, one that powers when the car is on, and a second fuse that power that has constant power. And what this allows, it allows the dash camera to know when to start up when you're driving. And also when you're turning the car off and when to run on just auxiliary battery power. And the battery power gives you extra protection, such as parking mode, which would kind of runs on low power, only activate when it does sees motion, or in an unforeseen circumstance, when bumps into your car while it's parked and you weren't there, you get that at least recorded. Hopefully you get a license plate in case that person decides to run. You have two wires for the hard wire kit. You have a power wire and you have a kind of a accessory wire. So I have two of these and we're gonna get started here shortly, okay? This is the car I'll be going in. So I'm just looking over right now to see exactly where I can place this camera. I might end up moving my fast track uh, toll uh, transponder device to see somewhere else. Let me try to locate it. I don't know, maybe a different side. We'll see when it gets in there. I mean, that the final, um, you know, trying to figure out which, uh, how much real estate you have in the end, it could be towards the end, but I think the more challenging part is running the wires. And since I have a rear camera, I'm about to run a wire all the way back here. But the most convenient portion is the fact that I have a fuse box located back here. So my fuse box is located back in this uh, corner here. So we'll get started. First things first, I'm unbox my dash camera. See, it's got my seal, make sure that it wasn't tampered. It's like a really good Black Friday deal on this. It normally goes for around 200 bucks, but um, got it for $120. Smaller than a thousand B, which is good because I was worried about being too big. This camera, this is the front camera. Instructions. Got some 3M 
mounting. Looks like the kind of a GoPro type mount, but no, it's not. Yeah, it's just 3M mount. And here's the hardwire kit I was describing earlier. And one part of this is gonna plug into the camera and then these, you have a black wire for your ground, the red wire for the power, and the yellow wire for accessories. This is my rear camera, really small. I'm gonna figure out a place to put this thing. It's my first time installing a rear camera, so we'll see if I can find a location for it. Looks like the extra wire to run this all the way up from the rear to the front of the camera. So good, it's like I have plenty of wire to reach the, the car, length of the car. Extra amounts like for the rear, maybe because if I may come incisive and I don't want to change my mind, <laughs> this I have extras. A little bit, and make sure when you order these cards, you get a high endurance a card because these SD cards go through a lot of abuse. They are constantly writing all the time. Where, whereas like it's the camera on my, I'm sorry, the SD card on my GoPro just writes, you know, like I said, you know, for those small short sessions, but these are constantly writing and then rewriting and rewriting and rewriting over and over and over and over again. So you need something that can tolerate it. So they're special cards and usually they're white in color or they'll say something along the lines of high endurance, you know, something that can tolerate that. Extra mount. And these things I always play with when I was a kid that they tell you not to eat and you always tear them apart and play with little beads. Let me go ahead and see what this looks like. All right, so this wire has to reach my fuse box and run all the way up to my camera, which I don't think this is gonna be enough wire. I have to see if I can find a different fuse location. Hopefully it should be enough, but I'm just worried because most cars or fuse box are located around, you know, the passenger side, glove box area, and there's, I know mine is located in the rear hatch. So we'll see. Now, let's see if I've got wires. This box is the one here. Uh, let's see if I have to figure this out. So, looking at this, I looked at my front and rear camera uh, plugins here. Looks like they're the same. So, I might be able to get by with running the power to the rear camera and just powering the front camera off that one. I can try it, but it looks like it may, you know what? It looks like there's a label here. That's telling me, oh, it, might, it might be all right. We'll see. As long as the camera gets power, I think that shouldn't matter. Underneath the glove box, looks like I found another fuse box under here. So I just unscrewed these little pins and this like it was it's like attached by a cord for the foot wheel light so so after working very hard I found a ground right in here so I attached it there and I tapped into the number 27 and 42 fuses. I'm gonna use fuse taps here. And one back there, if you can see it. So using those, hopefully I'm gonna now run the wire and I'm gonna use an instructional video from a guy on the forum, so you can actually check that out. But now I'm ready to go. So setting the dash camera, mounting that, I wanted to line up, sort of line up with the dot matrix here, use that as kind of a grid. 
And when you do that, I put it up higher enough where I don't block this sensor here because that is your light sensor for your V-mirror. But I fished it up through here to move this panel and I grounded it right in there. So there, that bolt, this bolt right there is where it grounded. And I continue to fish it up through, through here, the A pillar. And ran it up here. And you can see the little wire coming across through here. Now that just powers the front camera, which actually comes all the way across here. All right. And I ended up relocating it because of this rock chip that was in the field of the view in the, in the way here. But the camera comes right there. And for the rear camera, I ran a cord all the way back through here. You can see a little bit of it showing. Tucked it through the A pillar. I took off the airbag emblem, unscrewed it, and I can move that A pillar out the way a little bit. Ran the cord all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. And I just continued to run that cord until I got into this area. And this area, there's a good write up online uh, where um, a member of the Beamer forums actually did a whole how to remove these panels, but it's like a, you pull this off and there's a few different panels you pull off. But there you can see the rear camera and I initially mounted it on the glass itself, but I forgot that I had my rear um, glass tenant in addition to the factory tent. So if you have factory tent, no worries, you won't have any problem. But I had the tent shop actually go over and tent on top of the factory tent, which then when I was trying to move the camera around, I ended up pulling off the film just a little bit at the edge. So be careful of that if you do have any tent in addition to the factory tent. But when those cords are up here, you can pull off this weather stripping. I pulled this down a little bit. Um, undid this little clamp and you can fish the wire through this thing. This this is probably the hardest part was just pulling the wire up through this little hose. And this is where some of the factory wiring is going through anyway for the rear hatch. But once I got it through here, this little panel that I mentioned before it comes off and I can just quail the wire in here, the excess wire, and only just have this part sticking out that I need. And you know, you use the app to position the camera. But that's pretty much it. Um, a pretty straightforward process. I think the hardest part is just running the wire, but you can see where I ran mine. The only part that shows is up there by the, a, the B pillar, but that's not a major thing for me. Um, it all depends on how you want to do it. I tried to run it through the floor and come back up, but the hard part was there was nothing really to hide it in here. It was you know, trying to pull off all these interior panels and the wire wasn't quite long enough. So, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and here are some clips of what the camera looks like during the day and night. guys thanks for watching and subscribe